I am Larry Chinsky. I am the SE director at NetIQ. So I run all the sales engineers that really is going to be talking about identity management, access management, security management, anything that has to do with compliance, security, and access, uh, I have control over at NetIQ. So uh, we're going to take you through a few things and what we're doing back here today that I think is going to be really interesting for you. Now, the first thing that we get asked a lot of times is, what's the, what's the relationship between Novell and NetIQ? And I guess I should probably start off by asking you guys, are you IT guys, physicians, IT guys? Okay, good, good, a whole crow of IT guys. That's just, just my kind of people. So you more than likely have heard of Novell, right? Is that right? Okay, has anybody heard of NetIQ? Okay, good, good. So you've had some that's heard of NetIQ. And let me give you a little bit of history of what happened here. In 2011, Novell was, was acquired by a company called the Attachmate Group, okay? And when you looked at site of Novell in 2011, you basically had three different buying centers in there. You had a SUSE Linux division, you had an identity and access management division, and you had a, uh, a collaboration or file and networking services type of division that had things you may have heard of, GroupWise, NetWare, OES, Zenworks, things like that, right? Well, what we decided to do there is instead of having Novell with three individual units inside of it, we broke those units out into their own companies, right? So what you then had was, okay, we're gonna make SUSE Linux its own company again, as it used to be. Novell will stand alone. We're gonna take the identity and management solutions out of Novell and put them under NetIQ, right? Now, NetIQ was a market leader at that time for doing things like Windows management, Active Directory management, application management, and security. So they were typically thought of as a very tactical, uh, pointed tool set for helping you manage your infrastructure, right? So when you added an enterprise-wide identity and access and security solution to that, it really just made an enormous potential for what NetIQ could do, right? So that is why you see the two companies sharing booth space here at HIMSS. And uh, we're basically talking about the same type of messages. How can Novell and NetIQ help in healthcare, right? So let me talk to you a little bit about what we're doing back here, right? We've got, and I'm, I promise guys, I'm only going to take up about 15 minutes of your time because what I'd rather you do is go back and look at the, the guys who are actually running our demonstration system. So what we're actually simulating there is a, um, an emergency room or a clinic, right? So Michael, who just sat down over here, right? He has been watching the Olympics religiously, right? Olympics have been on. And tell me if I'm wrong, guys. So we all watch the Olympics, right? Now, how many of you think when you're watching curling, right? So you're watching curling, think, I could be an Olympic athlete, right? I could be an Olympian. That looks very easy, right? Or you watch these guys skiing downhill to make it look so easy. I could ski. I'm going to go try it. So Michael goes out. He tries to ski, breaks both of his legs, and ends up in the ER, right? So let's talk about a typical emergency room visit, right? You go to the ER, right? You walk up to, or in his case, we're going to wheel him up to the receptionist, right? So the receptionist has a computer at her desk. She gathers all of Michael's information. Uh, okay, Michael, go have a seat. We'll call you in about three hours when the nurses are ready for you back in triage, right? So in three hours, he go, goes back to triage. The nurse takes his blood pressure, takes his pulse, uh, takes his heart rate, you know, all those types of things, and then enters them in a system. Then he goes back out and sits down again, right? Three hours later, the physician calls him, comes back, physician kind of looks him over, hold on a second, I need to go look something up, walks back over to his computer, types up some information there, and then comes back again and says, okay, you got two broken legs, take a few of these pills and call me if it gets worse, right? So that's, that's kind of a typical experience. Could be an ER, could be a hospital, whatever. What we're actually doing now is we're going to try and create a better experience for the patient and make it a lot easier and efficient for the hospital staff. So in this case, what we're going to do, when Michael comes wheeling in, we're just going to sit him down over here, and the receptionist with their tablet is going to walk up to him and say, okay, let's get your name, let's get your insurance card, let's punch all that information into the system here, right? Well, what's going to happen on the back end, once they enter that information on the device, it's going to send it off to all of the nurses, right? So the nurses get notified via this event that, oh, hey, you got a new patient out there, his name is Michael, right? Now the nurses are walking around with their own tablets as well. So they're not actually sitting in front of computers anymore. So they get notified on a tablet, they've got a patient, they can walk up to Michael and say, okay, let's take your blood pressure, let's get your heart rate, let's uh, check your temperature, et cetera. We're gonna enter that in, the uh, in our information screen. Now this could be some type of patient record, it could be 
just some kind of uh, onboarding system that you have, pretty much anything there, right? Once that's done, it will then generate an event that goes over to the physician, right? And the physician, obviously, in most cases that we see, they're not necessarily associated to one hospital. They bounce around from three, four, or five different hospitals, right? So it's very likely that a physician is going to have his own device to manage his patients, right? So what that doctor can do is look at his tablet and say, oh, I've just gotten notified that Michael's here. Uh, I'm going to look at the information that been, that's been entered already that he got in triage. All that information gets put in there, right? And then he says, hey, you got something else going on with the ankle. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Instead of walking in the back room, right, accessing a computer and either getting online or accessing documents he, he may have stored somewhere, maybe it's Office 365 or Google, whatever, he can actually access that right from his tablet there. Because what we've done is we've taken all of the things a physician may want to do from his device, from a computer and created mobile apps and stuck them on his tablet, right? So part of the technology we have that we're showing back here is how do I take and look at web applications that are sitting out there that have a URL assigned to them or whatever and create a mobile app out of them that I can stick on a tablet, right? So that's what we're actually showing back there. Now in the meantime, what we can do is we can take your picture and we're going to print you out a badge that looks something like this. Matter of fact, it'll look exactly like this, minus the picture, right? So what that is going to be for, we're going to hand that to the patient or the patient's family, and what they're able to do with that, you've heard the phrase tap and go, right? You want to tap and log in, physicians want to use that, etc. But what we're actually going to do there is they can take that card, they can tap it on a, a reader we have back there, it's already been pre-programmed pre with the credentials we just created for you, and we'll automatically log you into about six different applications we have preloaded, right? Now, where you can see that used as pretty handily is if you give that to a family member, for example, that can actually bring up information on the screen that says, okay, here's Michael's state, here's where he's at, yep, here's his physician, here's uh, the next step in the process. He has to go into ER, or OR. Uh, he has to get uh, medical attention from this person or that person. So it just gives you another mechanism for a lot faster login that you can give to, you know, patients' families. It could, you could give it to a physician. So from now on, the physicians, if they had to log into a, a hard workstation, they could use it. So a lot of different capabilities we could do there, right? So what we're going to talk about is a piece of the technology that's driving that demo. Remember we talked about the receptionist takes the information in, and then when it's done, it, it flows magically to an iPad that the nurses have. Well, the information that we have there and how we're actually going to move that information is held in a product called Identity Manager. So Identity Manager's sole mission is life uh, is basically synchronizing of information from one system to another, right? And we can do that in a couple of different ways. You can either make that an automatic synchronization, maybe from a, a medical app to an LDAP directory, for example, something like that or we can create what we call a workflow process, right? A workflow process is basically what we're showing back here in the demo, right? Before the patient information can go to the doctor, a nurse has to actually enter his vitals, right? So before Michael can see a doctor, it's got to go to see the nurse first. That's typically how it works in an ER, right? Or any kind of clinic. <laughs> so what we're doing there is we're saying, okay, once that information has been gathered and that patient information has been entered, uh, we're going to send it to the nurse first. The nurse does her thing. When it's done, we're going to send it over to the doctor. Identity Manager is the software behind the scenes that is driving that. Okay? So it is an event-driven account synchronization piece of software, basically. Right? So how does it look? Well, in a typical day in a life in a hospital or in a day in a life of any kind of IT department, etc., you may have different types of roles, right? Doctor is a role. Nurse is a role. Receptionist. Patient employee, IT staff, et cetera. Those are all different roles inside of an organization. Well, in the life cycle of an individual user, we'll call them, right? A carbon-based life form person, different things occur. Their passwords may change. Their role in the organization may change. They may be uh, a help desk person at the hospital, then they get promoted, now they're CIO, right? So as their roles change, what Identity Manager does, it can dynamically update their information. So. Uh, for example, if the CIO has access to two different medical systems and a reporting framework, right, that a typical help desk person doesn't have, just by changing the role name in our HR application, for example, we can dynamically populate him into the, those other systems and grant him the access automatically. So in a typical situation, what would you have? Well, okay, uh, Michael just got promoted to CIO. 
Uh, what we need to do now is uh, call the help desk and call uh, the administrator of these different downstream systems over here so we can get somebody to create an account over there, create a password, get them logged in. Maybe he now gets a, a mobile phone or a device of some kind. So instead of doing all of that, what we can do is have that all pre-done using this solution called Identity Manager, right? Now, obviously, you would have uh, policies in place, uh, different type of compliance regulations set up to prevent accidental things like that or whatever. So you can actually build all that logic right into this tool, right? So as the life cycle change, you know, a lot of times when people think of this, they think of, uh, okay, hiring and firing. I'm going to get somebody into my organization and I'm going to get somebody out. But as we go through the life of those individuals, right, there are lots of things that can happen. So this solution will monitor and manage all of that. And then what's nice about that is we've got um, solutions out there that have regular event reporting, logging, notification, and things like that, right? So, you know, if I detect a violation that has occurred somewhere, and what's your name? Didn't see it. Jarno? Close enough? Jarno. Okay, Jarno says it's close enough. So, Jarno uh, has detected some kind of violation, or he's maybe the CISO that was, is going to receive a notification that a violation has occurred. But if he's on vacation for two weeks, what happens, right? In many cases, nothing, right? So, yeah, a typical reporting tool has done its job, but since he's not there, no action can be taken, right? With a piece of technology like this, what we can do is say, okay, if a violation occurs from some information event management system I've got, we can remediate that event automatically. So we just detected that Michael uh, went in and tried to access an account five times. We know he's not authorized. Instead of just generating a report and sending it off to somebody, what we're actually going to do is we're going to shut him down. We're going to disable his account and we're going to log him out of the system. We're not going to allow him to do anything until we can validate this, right? So that's a remediation event. So what we can do is we can take and, you know, if Jarno logged in, uh, every single day of the week from where you live, Jarno? Estonia. Where? Estonia. Estonia. Okay, so if he, if he logs in there every single day for the last year, and now he's logging in from China, that's probably not a big deal. But if he logs in from those both of those places at the exact same time, we've now correlated information from both those events. That's probably an issue, right? So what we can do is say, all right, there's something funky going on here. Instead of just generating a report, we're going to take action. We're going to find that ID. We're going to shut it down, right? We don't want another target or TJX uh, breach occurring here by something like that, right? So those are the kind of things you can do there. Now, what we've got here, this is just a, a really quick screenshot of what that looks like. These are all basically tiles that are on the screen. You, could, you click any of those if you want to make a request for something. So basically, you could roll this out to all of your employees, all of your nurses, physicians, make this really nice. So if they want to say, I think I need a, uh, I need a new office chair. My chair is not comfortable anymore. They can click on that. That will generate a request to be sent to somebody saying, hey, give me a new office chair. Right? Once that gets approved, it goes off to the purchasing guy. Once the purchasing guy approves it, it goes off to an order fulfillment center, whatever. Right? So the, the, what you're doing there is making the end user's life, whether they're a nurse, a physician, any type of role inside of the organization, a lot easier by letting them kind of take responsibility for some of their own data. Right? I want to change my own password. Right? I want to look at different history on uh, all the things I've requested for the last six months. Uh, and you actually track and log all of this information from one central location that's a nice portal view just like this. Right? So, like I said, when you come back here, if you come back and look at that demo, all of this technology we're talking about that's driving everything on the mobile devices is there. Right? Um, okay, so what we're doing here is a couple of things. The, the solution actually has what we call a connecting technology, right? So we connect to like Epic and McKesson and Cerner and things like that. What we can also do is connect to applications that are sitting out in the cloud, such as Office 365 and Google Docs and Salesforce.com, things like that. So if you are actually hosting or running any data out in the cloud, we've got a connecting technology that can actually connect from your corporate on-prem infrastructure out to whatever those cloud-based systems are, right? We can do that one of a couple ways. A straight connection where the user ID and password is synchronized or with what we're showing back here in the technical demonstration, we have a cloud access type of solution. What that does is it lays down a mobile app on your, uh, on your, on your tablet, wherever that is, 
and then it actually goes off and it can automatically create an account out in those cloud applications, but not create the password, right? So the password is actually held in a basically a SAML assertion, right? So if, let's say, Office 365 gets hacked, they get all of the IDs and passwords, it's not going to actually affect you, right, the IT guy at said hospital, because the password was never there in the first place, right? So we're using all of this technology back here, and matter of fact, we're trying to simulate an environment that's as true to what you would use as possible. So we're actually hosting all of the technical pieces, the software, up in a server farm in Provo, Utah, right? So we've got all of our tablets here on the show floor. All we've got is an internet connection out, right? The entire system and mechanism is being hosted in an off-site data center. So if you're uh, an organization that says, hey, listen, we don't want to have to maintain any of this stuff. Uh, we've got too many things to worry about. We want to host the entire identity management framework. We can do that. That's exactly what we're doing here, right? There is no actual server here. Uh, all of these software pieces are not being held here. The only thing we literally have are tablets, right? And a couple of workstations to show the tap and go stuff with what we have on the cards. Make sense, guys? Good? Okay. Uh, any questions for me on all that? I know that's kind of a lot of stuff in 15 minutes. Right? It usually takes about two hours to go through it. So, anything right. for me? If How not, we we're going to give you some, some freebies. He said they talk way too fast. The more enthusiastic you are, the more stuff we're going to give away. How did he do, guys? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, all right. So if you notice, there's a number on your chair behind your left elbow. We're going to give away some stuff right now. You're number 12 right there. You're number 11. I've already figured it out. You're number 7. I've got them in here. So hey, just hang on to your chair. And we're going to some things. Oh, you already got them in there? Do you want to come up? Oh, she's going to bring Amanda, no, you can pull them out. Oh, I can pull Amanda them out? All right. together the, the bundle here. Oh, she's going to put together the prizes. Prize pack. Oh my gosh, what a prize Turn pack. Turn my mic back a on here. And a water we are number 14. Number 14. Look behind your chair. It's 14, 14. Oh, you've got 14. Oh, there you go. The guy who broke his legs in the ski accident, right? <laughs> okay. All right, the next winner will be uh, for, a, for a coffee mug. Very, that, those are nice. Uh, number eight. Eight? Number eight. All right. You guys don't have to look at your numbers more than once, they don't change. <laughs> You never remember. You always was, want to make was, sure. He, was, he thought it might have changed. Number seven. 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 Oh, there we go. Over there, Ron. All right. And the last, we got one more thing. Yeah, one more well, thing. Well, let's do the USB chart or the, the coffee mug first and then the USB. All right. We've got number nine. Number, number nine. nine. Right here. All right. That's Eric. The grand prize, the USB device. The high charger. dollar, one of a kind USB charger. One of a kind, guys. Number t uh, 12. It doesn't charge other USBs, though, right? It <laughs> Yeah. It charges your phone. Is that the way it works? Yeah, I know. Number yeah. 12. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you, guys. We'll be doing Come on back. See the demo. Momentarily.